So hi everyone, and thank you for joining this presentation. It was originally canceled, it was originally canceled because uh, Cathy, who submitted this abstract, could not come. So from, I was a contributor in the project, and I said somebody should uh, speak about this project because it's amazing, and finally it's me to do it. So I will try to transcribe uh, a previous presentation she made in Singapore, and uh, maybe uh, we g g uh, speak from a more a community aspect of the project, not uh, from inside Mozilla, because I'm just a contributor. So the title of the presentation is um, an IoT forecast without clouds. This is sun, that's maybe another topic because it's raining today, but uh, it's quite promising. So first, uh, what is this project about? The main motivation was to create and to build a platform that can address uh, some smart home use cases. So basically this is a few automation of different devices you have connected together to a single place. And it can solve many problems you can find today on the market because there is some concern about security. IoT and security is a long story. People are very scared because it's, uh, there is a huge potential of uh, privacy leaks uh, and even safety issues. So, if you, if you uh, have a higher exposure, you're more exposed to problems. So if you're using devices which are readable system, okay. But you know that non system is uh, really not hackable. So that's one problem. You need to reduce uh, exposure. So if your gateway is running home, then you have more chance to be less attacked from the outside. And tower probability is also interesting because we have in the IoT context, we have a different, uh, different approach, but mostly it's always silo. So this is verticals from device to application, which means that you have like a thousand of remote control. Instead of thousand of remote control to control each device, you have thousand of apps on your phone, and uh, no, so no way to make them working together. So that's a problem. It's mostly a, a market uh, issue, not a technical problem, because if you want some interoperability, we have some solution to do this. Privacy already spoke about this. And uh, yeah, so running your smart home with DIY project can be time consuming. So this project is trying to make it uh, easier for everyone, even non-developers, they can uh, deploy this uh, soft solution home without too much uh, effort. Yeah. So yeah, what uh, this slide is about silo uh, I've just explained. So, uh, for different reasons, most pr products we have on the market are relying on the cloud, which is operating your device. So you don't have the control to your device directly, but you are using a cloud proxy, which, which has uh, access to the device itself. So this means that if there is some internet failure home or anywhere you, you, you screw, you cannot do anything. So some I have implemented some fallback option, but uh, this cloud uh, architecture is not... Um, uh, Mozilla take, took the opposite direction. They said, okay, if I can control directly to my device or to some, some units that can speak to the device, I'm solving all those cloud issues. And uh, specifically in, in Europe, and it's also in UK, now there is a lot of regulation. We're trying to enforce more privacy in system. So if you, you have two different approach, either you try to ensure security and privacy at the cloud level, or either you decide not to um, take uh, user data and uh, let him manage his own data. So in this case, you're not in position of uh, doing any disclosure or bad, bad uh, exploitation of user data. So it's a decentralized web of thing approach. I would say it's uh, the, inter the original internet spirit of uh, the way to design a system because the uh, internet was made of this of this uh, motivation of interoperability and a, a mesh network without any central point of failure. So we are reproducing this is somehow. Um, so you can, um, so if you want to get things started in the project, so the first there is a gateway, which is just a software component, where I will uh, explain about it later. And then you can buy different device or build your own device. That's kind of interesting. If you want to learn things, I recommend to try. And um, uh, they are speaking a common language. This is called the web things. 
So as I said, so yeah, you have the combination of Mozilla Gateway, which is software you can deploy in a Raspberry Pi, different device, and then uh, we can ensure some level of privacy by, de by design because everything stays on your own network. So I would say it's quite uh, trustworthy. So for security, that's an optional feature I'm showing here. You can access to the gateway from the outside. So if you remember what I said first, that uh, if you are uh, making a larger exposure, you can be subject to attacks. So the way security is under the ear. So you're not uh, getting into the gateway from the outside. It's uh, the gateway which is opening a tunnel to, uh, uh, to the Mozilla IoT subdomain. And then you can enter from this uh, tunnel to uh, back to your system. But it's not Mozilla who get access to your, to your, uh, to your gateway. So that's something you should know. And again, this is an optional feature. If you are working in a disconnected environment, you can just skip this and you can get uh, local access. So yeah, for interoperability, I used to work on this uh, before and um, I would say that the Mozilla approach is quite uh, smart because they try to, let's say, replicate what work in the web as we know it, as HTTP, HTML for web viewing web page and try to do this differently. Uh, in a IoT context. So it was based on effort made by uh, the W3C. There is a working group called uh, Web of Things. And uh, it really used different technologies that already existed. It didn't create everything from scratch and tried to make it more adapt for, adapted for IoT concerns. So basically, you find HTTP WebSocket for real time, JSON description for uh, REST API, and so on. And all other IoT um, uh, protocols or radio are already standardized. There is interoperability bridge between uh, ZB, for instance, and the Web of Things. And all of this is running on the internet. Yeah. Internet technology, not the internet itself. So we are, there is a community, it's, uh, development is open, so that's pretty cool. That, uh, you can see the feature ongoing and uh, if you find any issue on the master branch and so on, you can reach developers uh, easily. You can get the source code, report issue. We have an RSC channel, and now moving, moving to Matrix, as Mozilla is uh, um, moving from IRC to Matrix. But I, you, you reach uh, people both sides at the moment. So from an architecture point of view, um, it's a Node.js application. So software I'm explaining here is uh, the gateway itself. So basically it's a server when you can uh, connect all the devices. So you need to register them. So you have different uh, way to add the devices. So it's done at the moment by a UI. So you have like a wizard when you can search for device at them and so on. And uh, it's, it's a Node.js uh, um, express uh, service where you have all the UI and all the endpoints for all the logic. And um, as, um, something really smart, I believe it was, it was, at the beginning it was designed to be extensible for this new stuff. So that's something I, I want to emphasize is that uh, the community, and I made a couple of them, but now we have about 100 uh, third contributions for managing, I don't know, I made some from uh, activity pub mastodon client so if i want my uh, device to talk to my friends i can do it using this and if you want to bridge this to anything you can do this i think somebody also made a, uh, a github uh, a tracker this means when there is a new bug you can uh, raise an alarm in your home or whatever you want so it's, it's only just uh, event and action so you can do whatever you you you, you need so yeah, so you have a direct control of your device. There is no middleman. There is no exposure to the other side. You can uh, deploy it by, you, by yourself. Uh, your data stay home. You can enable some feature for logging your data and so on, but it stay under your control. So this means uh, everything stay on your Raspberry Pi SD card. And uh, yeah, you can expand the ecosystem with other devices which are dumb devices but that speak the WebSync API. So for the demonstration, she used to make uh, a demonstration of her home in uh, California. 
but um, maybe I will not uh, get access to her home. That would be a privacy violation. <laughs> so I will maybe show you a couple of other things I'm doing now. Um, okay. So, oh. So what you see here is my desk home. I have um, made this uh, DIY. I have a very slow connection here. So I made a DIY robot, which is my own web thing, and I made uh, uh, an API to control it. So here is a dashboard. So this is a gateway view of uh, all the things I have home. So here is a light, for instance. OK, it's turned on. I, I can change the color. What color do you want to make sure it's not a fake demo? <laughs> Purple? Pink, OK. <laughs> uh, OK, this isn't. And uh, yeah, you can add some virtual device, like a micro switch, so you can uh, get uh, some, uh, yeah, so some connection between all the devices. So it will be, uh, let's create some kind of uh, new rule. Like, um, so let's, uh, okay, no, I mean, maybe I can t turn my others off. Um, so let's say I have this actuator. So you know what is a sensor, right? But an actuator is uh, the opposite, something that is producing value. What's, uh, so, uh, no, which is consuming value. So here is simulating an action. For instance, if I change the on state of my switch, I can decide to uh, change the color of my light, for instance. So yellow. Okay. So yeah, then they are linked. So basically, this means that so if I'm turning it on, oh, it's already yellow, mm, yellow-ish. <laughs> but you see, it doesn't turn off because why? Because I set if keyword. That's it's only uh, when there is a change. I should put a while. This means when when it's on, it should turn yellow. And when it's off, uh, I should create another rule to say another color. So let's do it. Um, oh. OK. So on the left, the actuator. On the right, the, the color. Oh. And I said on off. Then I can change the color here. Uh, blue. Okay, it was off, so now it's yellow and now it's turning to. So I can show you more. Oh, yeah, this is a, yeah, another hack. Maybe in the video it will be faster. Um, So yeah, I made some experimentation in trying to merge reality, the real one and the virtual one. So I'm using some color sensor, which is measuring uh, the color, obviously. And then from, I made a web application, which is display, updating the color of, uh, of uh, the sensor in uh, 3D. So it's an NA frame uh, scene. And if you don't know about this framework, it's, pretty, it's quite interesting because you can create uh, VR, just like writing HTML, you don't have uh, to write any JavaScript. It's uh, mostly uh, tags. You just describe the scene and so on. So yeah, here it's, it's running on a VR headset. And uh, sorry for the quality, but what's uh, interesting here that you can reach some web things directly. I'm passing a local address of my uh, uh, sensor, and it's updating uh, uh, accordingly. So even if you if you don't want to use, uh, or if you have other needs that's a smart home platform, you can use this API to describe things, and uh, it's quite convenient for uh, describing uh, physical objects and flexible enough, yeah. 
So here is a, in a AR version of it. I think it's a Magic Leap device. Um, and then, yeah, I tried to make a, a 3D controller of my uh, gate, my gate, my uh, WebSync gateway. So what you see on the bottom right is a 3D view of all the widgets you have in uh, 2D, which is a SVG uh, dashboard. Uh, so you can explore around the, all the device. So it was mostly a proof of concept. So what, I'm, what am I doing here? Um, I think I'm, so yeah, this is all the switch you can see here. Here is a, is a smart uh, outlet. I think I have the same on this side and I can decide to, con to control it directly with a, a VR controller. So that's a, a nice proof of concept. So here is my lava lamp uh, on top. So if you want to get started, uh, you, you need to get a Raspberry Pi. You can also run it on your regular system. Like um, I suppose Mac should work, but I'm a Linux guy. So anyway, you can run it in the container or, okay, so here is the same version of the, the, the dashboard, but in 3D, so you can look all around. So, and, uh, yeah, I think I'm doing the same here. <laughs> oh, here, another hack. So, yeah, I try to mix some uh, video, my webcam output, and try to inject it into a VR world, but it's uh, really very weird. So I'm controlling a fan. I don't know if you see it, show it. Okay, that's one demonstration, yeah. Uh, uh, if there is any question, I can uh, take them now, more or less, yeah. Okay, so it's finished. Thank you. And then, if you have questions, we can Anybody has questions? One time, two time. Hello, uh, thanks for your presentation. I'm not sure if you know this, but I'm wondering uh, about if there is like some market research on uh, IoT adoption, because I think like in principle, a technology has been around for a while. And uh, I, I probably in recent times, I think probably for the last uh, five or six years, there's like a lot more of this, but I haven't really seen uh, other than maybe like Nest or things like that, like a big uh, consumer adoption of IoT, or am I mistaken? Um, I know that um, Mozilla has a working group. Uh, I don't remember the name. It is, um, um, do you know them? Maybe somebody in the room knows. So they try to, to try to identify the back practice in products and uh, for instance, for Christmas, they were uh, publishing like a, a selling, uh, a selling uh, instruction and recommendation which device should be used and not. So I suppose they are aware based on different, uh, yeah, different study like you so were suggesting. So you, you should uh, you should try to contact uh, them. Yeah, it's um, I don't remember the name of it. Mozilla. Um, so yeah, if you look at. Which IoT device should I buy if I care about this? Uh, maybe you'll find this. But it depends on the countries, uh, for instance. And uh, something I didn't uh, mention, but uh, in France, uh, in Europe, uh, we have a very strong regulation now. Not, not the regulation is that strong, but the, the principle are quite strong because the GDPR regulation has one article which is anything about recommendation for making system with privacy by design and by default. And if you look at what is on the market today, I would be really surprised to see if any uh, complies this. Yeah. So today we care about privacy, mostly about uh, personal information, mostly social media or even personal communication. But IoT has a huge, huge uh, impact on uh, people's uh, life. So yeah, I think it's an opportunity for a platform like this one or any open source software because privacy is some part of our DNA. We did this for day zero, so 
let's, let's move on. Yeah, yeah another one, sure. Um, thanks so much for for showing all of this. I'm, I, I love uh, automation, but I'm like, privacy to me is a big blocker to like doing this kind of projects at home. Uh, but saying this, it's like, I don't know, I find it super fascinating. Do you know of any alternatives to like Alexa or things that could receive voice commands that doesn't go through like Google, Amazon, or? Okay, excellent other? question. I think you should stay in the room because somebody is who speak about The next talk is yeah. about common voice. <laughs> So I can reveal some secrets uh, because there was this uh, all hands uh, session in uh, Berlin, and some Mozillian uh, team with a uh, IoT guy, and they managed to make it work as a proof of concept. So it should be deployed sooner or later. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, just a question. Put the mic next to your mouth. Right. Cool. Uh, is it possible to update firmware? Yes. Of the bulbs or. Uh, I think it's enabled by default. Uh, it's maybe an option. But, uh, yeah, but it's, it's uh, yeah. Um, basically, yeah, it's working. It's already working. Uh, you can update the whole platform, but also the add-ons individually. So, yeah. So that's uh, a good question, a good remark, because if you are super paranoid, enabling uh, update can be. Uh, so, uh, sort of uh, a source of issue. So if somebody hijacks the update, uh, so uh, yeah, that's an interesting topic. Yeah. More questions? No, thank you, Philippe. Uh, thanks.